In this video, we're going to look at how you can draw a ray diagram for the image formed in a plane mirror. And in order to do this, you're going to need to have a pencil, a 30 centimeter ruler and a pen. And the general rule is going to be if we're writing words, we're going to use the pen. If we're drawing, we're going to use the pencil. So the first job is going to be to draw in the plane mirror, which I'm going to draw in here. And to show which side is shiny, shiny, sorry, to show which side is shiny, you're going to draw in these hash marks on the side that isn't shiny. So that means this is going to be the silver side. And once we've drawn that in in pencil, I'm now going to label that as the mirror. The next step is to draw in the object. And to keep things simple, that's the thing that you're seeing in the mirror. Uh, the object that you're going to try and see in the mirror. I'm going to do that as a little spot and I'm going to label that as object. So once we have got our object drawn in, the next thing that we're going to do is draw in some rays of light. And the principle in a ray diagram is that you draw in a few rays of light. There would be, in fact, billions of rays of light, but you draw in a few that can help you to understand what's going on. So I'm going to draw in one ray of light that starts from the object and hits the mirror. And I'm going to do that so it hits exactly on the corner of one square. And you'll see why that's helpful to do in a minute. And to show which way the light's going, I'm going to draw an arrow on that. So this would be called the incident ray because that is the ray of light which is incident on the mirror. Now, where the light ray hits the mirror, I now need to draw in a dotted line, which is called the normal. So having drawn that in, I'm going to label that as a normal. And the next thing is that I need to draw in a reflected ray over here, which needs to have an angle of reflection, which is the angle between the normal and that reflected ray, has got to be the same as this angle of incidence between the incident ray and the normal. And in order to get that right, I can make use of the fact that I've got squared paper. So here, when the ray went six squares towards the mirror, it went three squares down. So if I do the same thing and do one, two, three squares down and one, two, three, four, five, six squares out, if I make my reflected ray go through that point there, it will ensure that the angle of incidence is exactly the same as the angle of reflection. Now. Um, <clears throat> I could have measured these angles with a protractor if I wasn't on squared paper, but this makes things quite easy with the squared paper. I'm now going to do exactly the same process again, but for another ray coming from the object and hitting the mirror. And this time I'm going to make it hit one further square down, so it will have gone four squares down. So I'm going to draw that incident ray in. And once I've drawn that incident ray in, I'm going to draw a, another normal for that one. And I can label that as another normal in pen. And now, I, for that incident ray here, it went one, two, three, four, five, six squares in, and one, two, three, four squares down. So I can make the reflected ray one, two, three, four down one, two, three, four, five, six out. So if I make it go through that point there, then it will ensure that it is reflected with the same angle of reflection as the angle of incidence. So this angle here will be the same as this angle here. Now, these will be going into somebody's eye. So I can draw in a nice big eye with those going in and I'm going to label that eye to show that the light is going into someone's eye. So now we get to the really interesting part, which is how do we know uh, where the image is formed? So for this, we have to realise that our brain is not very clever and it assumes that this light has always travelled in a straight line. So we have to line up our ruler with this reflected ray and once we have carefully lined up the ruler with this reflected ray, 
we need to put in a dotted line, which is called a virtual ray, going back behind the mirror in the same direction that that reflected ray was coming from. And we draw that as dotted because the ray has not actually done this. And then we need to do exactly the same thing for the uh, other reflected ray. So I'm lining the ruler up perfectly alongside it. And then I need to, once I've got that perfectly lined up, I need to do another virtual ray going back and then the important point is where these uh, virtual rays cross, which is about here. And that is where the image will form. And the way we can understand that is that these rays, the real rays, actually came from the same point on our object. So our brain will infer that the image is here, and that will get called a virtual image because it involved virtual rays crossing. Now, to check that we've done this correctly, we can check that the image is generally should form the same distance behind the plane mirror as the object was in front. So we can check this. This object is one, two, three, four, five, six squares in front, and the image is one, two, three, four, five, six squares behind. So there we have our ray diagram for the image formed by a plane mirror.